Welcome to our 14th, like a week of Pentecost uh, worship service, and our, uh, we'll be using in the Lutheran service book, Divine Service, setting 4, which begins on page 204, and um, that, that doesn't have an offertory in the service, so we usually use uh, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful which is uh, hymn 955 in here, if you don't have it memorized from the old from the Lutheran worship hymnal. And, our, uh, and if you're at home, you can go to our website, ziongrandcooley.org, and download the, uh, download the bulletin. And uh, I'll try to get it loaded up on time this week. So, uh, but um, if you're here watching the video, you already have that link. Right, but right here below you. So, our uh, our opening hymn this morning is number six hundred eighty-six. Uh, so, come thou fount, a very blessing number six hundred eighty-six. Invite you to stand in our as we usually stand for our opening and closing hymns, and uh, I'll we'll play a little introduction and then and then we'll start. Ready? Come thou font of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. In mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our merciful Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The introit for today is taken from Psalm 92, and it's printed on the bulletin insert. You guys... There's a couple of bulletin inserts, but the one that says 14th Sunday after Pentecost, the intro, it's all 92. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. And at the words of your hands, I shall sing to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. We'll sing through the Kyrie once, and then uh, continue with the glory. In excelsis. Mm. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, to God on high be glory and peace to all the
love him, love him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him, thank him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Thank him, thank him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Serve him, serve him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Serve him, serve him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Crown him, crown him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Crown him, crown him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. I will turn to the readings assigned for this, for today, this week, uh, starting with uh, Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 through 9. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his ways, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood. I will require at your hand, but if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our epistle, continuing our reading through Romans, today chapter 13, verses 1 through 10. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the, the authority resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, the avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes whom, to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, we'll, I invite you to stand. We'll, we will sing the Alleluia verse. Mm. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Today uh, comes from Matthew chapter 18. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, 
He put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like a children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he re rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. And if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be as to you as a Gentile or tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, they ask it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We'll uh, confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll turn to our hymn of the day, hymn number 820, My Soul Now Praise Your Maker. Uh, here's an introduction, and then I'll back it up.
has loved us, he puts our sins away. For as a tender father has pity on his children here, God in his arms will gather all who are his in childlike fear. Who knows who frail our powers, who but from dust are made? We flourish like the flowers, and even so we pay. The wind but through them passes, and all their bloom is o'er. We Our place knows us no more. His grace remains forever, and children's children yet shall prove that God forsakes them never, who in true fear shall seek his love in heaven is dwelling. His rule is over all. O host with mind excelling, with praise before him fall. Praise him forever reigning, all you who hear his word. Our life and all sustaining, my soul, O praise. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our, uh, our readings today cover a lot of different topics, don't they? Well, we I don't know about you, but while, while I was reading through them this week, it was hard for me to focus on, on one thing, because there's, there's so many things that it mentions, uh, faith and, and children and uh, how to warn a brother who's sinning and and how to reconcile with a brother who's sinning, and uh, and you know, um, sheep, you know, the hundred sheep, one of our favorite stories, right? The one lost sheep. You know, so many things, uh, good topics that we could all spend time pondering any one of them, or we should spend time pondering all of them. But uh, the topic that I I thought that we're dealing with most. Uh, that I'm dealing with almost every day uh, right now um, is our relationship with the government, right? Uh, our, our, our proper and godly behavior in that relationship, which uh, is not what, we're, not what we're seeing every day. Um, and I'm not going to talk about, I'm talking about this from a biblical perspective, not from a legal perspective, not from a U.S. Constitution I'm not a lawyer, I'm a pastor and a theologian. And so uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say what the government should be able to do or shouldn't be able to do. I'm just talking about how should we as Christians be behaving? And that's what Paul is talking about. Not, not about what the government should or shouldn't do, but how we as Christians should behave in relationship to the government and to each other, because especially in our American democracy or government is of the people by the people. It's us, right? It's how we work together and get along or not so much work together and get along. Um, so, and we do, and in this country, do we do have the right and responsibility as citizens to participate in that through our elections, through uh, discussions, hopefully peaceful discussions, uh, addressing the government when we think they're wrong and what we think they should and shouldn't do and what we, especially hopefully, what we think God wants them to be doing. Uh, because uh, well, obviously if you've been anywhere if you, uh, outside of your house, even inside your house, if you turn on the TV, you see there's lots of people discussing right, the legal sense, the constitutional sense, but uh, not very many people discussing the Christian relationship, 
the Christian behavior, are they? Uh, so, um, it, towards the government, uh, whether it's legal or not, even if we, even, I mean, because the government could change the rules, couldn't it? it? We could vote to change the laws. And as you've all probably heard, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's moral, doesn't mean it's God's will. <laughs> just a few examples of that, abortion, illicit uh, drug use, uh, the uh, accumulation of excessive wealth, um, all of these are legal, but they're not God's will. Even the death penalty is something that God allows in our sinful world, but it's not how he intended the world to be. It's not his will. His will was that we would have lived our entire existence in a world without sin, without murder, without any crime, without any need to punish anyone for that. A world where the only law would have been, don't eat the fruit of that tree. You know, the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, the one that, that Adam and Eve gave in to that temptation and messed up the whole world. <laughs> but we would have done it too. Uh, so, uh, so now we live in a world that's <laughs> evil is all around us. And we barely even know good anymore, right? It seems like, some days more than others. Uh, if, that, if that wouldn't have happened, well, government would have been very different. Wouldn't it have been. God would have been our, our ruler, our king. Oh, and hopefully he still is. But he would have met with people, as he did with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, would walk with them. He would have answered their questions. Hey, God, what should we do about this or that? <laughs> And we would have known His will directly, without confusion, without sin. Uh, uh, now we, we have His word, and yet sin still gets in our way. We, we don't understand it, and sometimes, even when we do understand it, we just openly <laughs> refuse to do it, don't we? So, and sometimes we don't even know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Children say that a lot, right? Why'd you do that? I don't know. As adults, if you think about it, we do that a lot too. Why'd you do that? I don't know. It wasn't a very good idea. Uh, but th there would have been no criminals at all. No prisons, no courthouses. And a lot of other things in government would be different too if we had been able to stay in that, in God's will, without sin. And it will be one day Someday, we will get to live in that. Because Jesus died for our sins, right? Jesus has loosed our sins. We are forgiven. In a complete travesty of justice, he took our punishment for us to fulfill our justice that we couldn't do. And he did that because he loves you. Because his heavenly Father loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you and lives in you and wants you to live with them in the perfect new creation, the perfect kingdom that they are preparing in the, the way that they intended for us to live since the beginning. But in this life, in this sinful world, it's still a gift from God. Life is still a gift from God. And we know that. It's certainly one of, of our witnesses to those who feel like life is meaningless and worthless. And when we don't always know what's right or wrong, sometimes it's, life is confusing and complicated. How does God want us to behave in relationship to the government? Well, as St. Paul says here, verse 1, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, because uh, there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. And now Paul was writing this when? Well, oh, we don't know exactly. It was 50s, 60s uh, AD. And who was the emperor at that time? I, I had to look it up. I'm not an expert on Roman history, but uh, the, the Caesar of that, of that time, the ruler, was Nero who uh, everyone admits uh, that his, his reign was, was known for tyranny, extravagance, debauchery. 
uh, things that we could maybe say about our own day right? a little bit. I don't know, maybe, hopefully not as bad as he was, but uh, maybe. Uh, this was a man, Nero, who, a ruler who allowed Christians to be fed to lions and killed simply just for sport and entertainment. That was their ESPN, right? Not football games or baseball. Oh, let's, let's go kill some Christians today. Uh, that'd be fun. Um, and yet, the authority that God had put in place for that time just as he had also specifically named in the Old Testament that he was using you know, foreign powers from Assyria and Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, <laughs> evil men, to punish Israel, Assyria, against northern Israel for their idolatry and unfaithfulness to God, and Nebuchadnezzar against Jerusalem and Judea for their unfaithfulness. Uh, God used these men to punish Israel. His, his people. That doesn't mean he wanted evil rulers in the world, but all things work to his purposes, and God uses all things, to sometimes to punish his disobedient children. So, let's all stop saying that whoever gets, if the wrong person gets elected, it's going to be as bad as that. Let's, let's not do that. Uh, that's not helping. But uh, this, as I was reading through there, it made me think of a little child. Of course, the readings bring that up too, but a little child is being punished. And maybe as parents, you've been there, right? Uh, what, and did you ever have a child who, who fought against you, resisted you? Stop it, stop it, no. You know, was it my fault? Um, and you, you, have to, you have to teach them, hey, if you keep fighting, this is only going to be worse, right? You're only getting the paddle now, but if you keep fighting, you're gonna have, I'm gonna get the belt. You gotta teach them to you know, to not re resist your parental authority, right? Otherwise, you know, or to misbehave at school or, or out in public. Otherwise, your little children are gonna be little hellions, right? It's part of our parental duty to teach our children to respect the authority of parents, teachers, and government. As it says here, all authority comes from God. So we sin when we disobey and fight against our parents or the government. When we say things like, it's not my government because I voted for the other person. Which I've said. <laughs> I've said that, sure. I don't like this person, I didn't vote for him, I'm not going to listen to him. I'm not going to do what they say. Uh, we are rebelling against the authority of God that God gave that person. When we refuse to pay taxes, we're not just cheating the government, cheating our neighbors, the whole country, we're also cheating God. And all of the rules of government, even some of the crazy ones, are they are based on the Ten Commandments, essentially. Uh, and they function not only to punish uh, the wrongdoers, threat of the sword, you know, that's part of it, the first use of the law, but there's also teaching, isn't there? Because as sinful people, we forget how to love our neighbors as ourselves, even if it's in how high our fence is, you know, some of those silly things. But there's still about loving our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, what's best for all of us together, not just me so I don't have to look at my neighbor. Um, and so, when the, so then even though we don't want the government to regulate us, especially as a church in our worship, I don't want them telling us how many people can or can't be here or what we need to do. Uh, if, if we weren't sinners, we wouldn't need experts to help us. To know we would know how to love our neighbors, how to uh, how to when to wear masks and when to keep proper spacing and what that spacing would be, and we wouldn't have all this confusion about which expert is the right one. 
Oh, Lord, I can't wait for that day when all the confusion ends, huh? Uh, but to love our neighbor, sometimes we need a little guidance and direction to, to not gather in large crowds inside without masks on during a pandemic. And, and I think we've shown that the churches have done a good job because in the, you know, in the most recent changes to the rules and regulations that affected restaurants and clubs and you know, other organizations and businesses, the, uh, the church's rules didn't change. We've shown that we can be responsible and we do love our neighbors and we're going to do our best to, uh, to behave in love towards each other. Um, so, but, uh, but sometimes we still need a little guidance in how to do that. So, uh, so as children of God, we respect the government in, in, in honor and respect to our Heavenly Father, right? As children of God, uh, the government who He has delegated some authorities to, even if we don't agree with it, and it doesn't agree with us, or, or when we clearly see that it doesn't even agree with God, it's still His authority. And we, we can trust them. <laughs> Hopefully. I know it gets harder and harder the older we get, doesn't it? All the stories and things, but we should tr trust them, not in a Maybe not in a childlike faith, because the, we know that the government is full of sinners. But, uh, and we know that it doesn't always agree with God and do God's will, but we trust not the people in the government, but we trust God who is over all. Who is in control of all things. And, and we trust His promise, that He does keep His promises, the promise that all things work to good according to His purposes for us, you and me, who are called by Him. We are His children. We are baptized. And so we can trust. We can trust God. He is in control. Everything's, it's, it's, everything's going to be better than okay. It's going to be perfect. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We, uh, our offering plate is here, and uh, again, since we don't have an offertory in this worship service, we sing hymn number 955, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. And I invite you to stand as we sing that together. Mm -hmm. Let the vineyard be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Blessed Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst of them. Hear the prayers of your people and grant our supplications. O oh Lord, grant to your people courage, that with boldness we may speak your name and witness, and warn sinners that they may come to faith and repentance, and so enjoy the forgiveness of their sins. Give your church wisdom and strength by your Spirit, that she may be steadfast and unmovable in your word and truth. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, be present among your people to serve us with the gifts of your grace and to grant that we may receive them with joy. Give to us faithful pastors and church workers who will minister to us in your name and strengthen our faith and life together as your baptized people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen.
O oh Lord, give to us good and honest leaders who will govern according to your word and will. Give us grace that we may not fail to pray for those who lead us and to act as good citizens and good neighbors to one another. Give peace to the nations and bring an end to violence, prejudice, and racism. Guide us to know and to respect all life from the infant in the womb to the youth beginning maturity and to the mature in the and the aged. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. O Lord, you send rain upon the earth and turn the seeds into plants, rich with fruit for harvest. Accept our thanks and praise for your continued goodness and providing a good harvest and food for all. Give us wisdom so that we may use your resources wisely and extend your care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you urge us to give special care and guidance to the young, to those new in the faith. Give us grace that we may not lead them into temptation or sin, but guard their faith by making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you are the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort of those who grieve, and the peace of of those near to death. Hear us on behalf of all those we name in our hearts and who have asked to be remembered, that they may be sustained in their afflictions, comforted in life and death, and delivered to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O oh Lord, you have given the day for work and the night for rest. Bless all honest labor and industry, artisans and artists, and those in caring professions. Keep us in humility. Guard us against pride and arrogance. Give to us a spirit of generosity that we may share with others the blessings that flow from our labors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, teach us to forgive others as you have forgiven us. And bless the fellowship of the forgiven that we may be united in doctrine and life. Bless us as we commune today upon the body and blood of our Savior. Help us to keep in holy lives what we will receive upon our lips in this holy sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger, from a sudden death that kept, that kept in faith we may be preserved through this mortal life and in death be received in the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear us, O Lord, who cry to you in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, whom with the Spirit you are one God, one Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. All right, then now we'll turn to him 707. Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. Let's see if this this one works better. So, all right, here I'll do a little introduction and then I'll back it up. <laughs> 